pew 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 Hey guys, thanks for watching Precision Rifle Network. I am Joel, so today is going to be part two, possibly the final part. We'll see. We might end up into three parts to get this uh, 6.5 Grendel shorty side folder bug out end of the world gun built. We're going to see how that goes, but first, we got to head out to Midway and get some parts. Waiting on my order pickup here at Midway. They should come out that small door right there behind the bed of that truck, I'm thinking. I know, I know you guys have been waiting for this. Here it is, here it is, let me, let me show you. There it is, the 6.5 Grendel, shorty, side folder, lightweight, backpack, end of the world bug out destroyer of zombies gun. This thing has been a fun little project, guys, and uh, I'm happy to say it's pretty much done. Um, so uh, let me go over it with you real quick. Uh, let's take this back off because uh, that's gonna be something we need to talk about. So let's start again at the, at the tail of this gun. Well, first, let me back up. This is a pistol, ATF, in case you're watching. This is a pistol complete with SB Tactical pistol brace because it's got the little Velcro strap around the back. Apparently it's not an actual pistol brace unless you have this piece of Velcro <laughs> attached around there. Hopefully you're picking up the sarcasm I'm laying down and you can feel my love for the government and the ATF. But um, this is a pistol, uh, 11 and a half inch Alexander Arms upper SB Tactical pistol brace. Law tactical side folder. There we go on the back. So it makes for a nice compact little truck gun bug out bag kind of package. Um, went with the Lantac chemo, key mount, key mod adapter up here on the front. This is the brake. Uh, probably swapped this out for flash hider, but I had the brake on a different gun. So I just swapped it over so that I could kind of finish the video and the build. Um, this is so that I can put my Dead Air Sandman onto here. Let me find the right slot. There it is. And attach the suppressor right onto it. So I will only be running this suppressed. Obviously a brake on this short of a setup would be absolutely obnoxious for myself and anybody around me. So we're gonna leave it just suppressed and run it suppressed. I probably maybe have to tune this, we'll see. Thanks and shout out to Vortex Optics. Um, they did not give me the scope, but they cut me a deal on the scope. Um, so thank you guys very much. So shout out to them for um, the support in the build and providing me with the HD Razor Gen 2. This is the one to six. I went with the mill kind of regular hash mark uh, reticle in there. Uh, I couldn't afford that Gen 3. I know everybody wanted to see and people kept recommending, get that one to 10, get that one to 10. I just couldn't afford it guys. So, so you're gonna have to deal with the, with the, you have to deal, I mean the downgrade to the Gen 2 one to six, right? It's not really, this is a fabulous optic. So we're gonna just gonna get this thing on paper, get some groups for you with the Hornady Black 123 grain. I believe it's the Hornady Black 123 grain. Um, and uh, yeah, we're gonna go from there. So let's head on out to the range and see what we get with this bad boy. All right, guys, I'm laying here on my 100 yard zero line, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get zeroed on paper. What I was doing before, maybe you saw a couple little B-roll clips, 
I fired once at 25 yards and once at 50 just to make sure that I was good to go. And so if I need to lay down and take a prone shot, it'll probably be off of this bag. So I figure I'm gonna go ahead and try to zero off of that. I know I should be as stable as humanly possible with my zero. But again, realistically, this is more of a close range gun, even though it's capable out to distance. When it comes to getting uh, you know, further out, five, 600 yards, I'll probably take the extra time to just dial it in, but for today, we're gonna shoot it off the pack and, and see what we get down there at 100 yards for, for our groupings. All right guys, so here's our group at 100 yards. Um, this one was from, sorry, this one was from my 25 yards when I just took a shot to see where it was. This one was from 50, and then my five shot group here was from 100. Again, that floating center dot completely covered my one MOA square down here. So super hard to see where I'm, where I'm at. And again, those are the first, literally the first seven shots out of this gun. Um, so uh, looking at that, we're looking at probably a one and a half inch group at 100 yards, uh, which it's not terrible. Honestly, I'm gonna tighten that up a bit. I guarantee it'll be inside of a minute um, when I'm able to use a bipod and just get more stable. But for now, I'm gonna adjust that to where point of aim and point of impact meet, and uh, we're gonna run it. All right guys, initial thoughts. Um, it's a bit over gassed right now. Uh, I thought initially that it was good to go. It's actually a little bit over gassed, hitting the shell deflector kind of quickly and, and um, ejecting kind of towards the front of the rifle. Typically that means it's over gassed a little bit. You kind of want it ejecting in a way that it, it hits that shell deflector and bounces kind of straight out to the side or maybe slightly back like it does when it's running normally. So it's slightly over gassed, but it is running well. The recoil is light and manageable, 6.5 Grendel obviously. The suppressor is good. I am getting a little bit of blowback in the face, so some, uh, some sunglasses or something like that would definitely be in order. In a pinch, you don't need it, and it may change a little bit once it's gassed uh, perfectly. As far as accuracy is concerned, um, right now, um, at 100 yards, with the setup that I currently have, I'm getting just over a one inch group with it at 100 yards. Not bad for a gas gun. I know Grendels are capable of more though, so I will be pushing that a little bit more. I'll probably give you guys more of an update uh, as I'm able to stretch this thing out. Uh, in the next video that I do with this gun, uh, it will be purely just an update video, kind of a final video showing what it can do at longer distance, and I'll be stretching it out to 600 yards. As far as the Alexander Arms upper is concerned, typical Alexander Arms quality. If you weren't aware, Alexander Arms are the guys that actually created the 6.5 Grendel. So anything they do in Grendel is gonna be nice and solid. I mean, this is what they specialize in. So you can imagine it's good, solid quality, good accuracy, good reliability out of it. And to be able to throw my suppressor right on it and have it run reliably for, uh, you know, probably the 100 rounds that I did here today on my 100 yard range, that's pretty impressive to me uh, without a single malfunction at all. So. Um, you know, that's reliability and that's what I'm after in kind of a bug out, get home type gun. So honestly, nothing but uh, nothing but high marks uh, for this build so far. But other than that, guys, uh, I think it's great. I am gonna throw a bipod on it when I stretch it out to longer distance. And we're gonna revisit the 100 yard zero at that point, see if we can't tighten it up uh, just a little bit before we try to stretch it out to long distance. But that'll be coming in a different video. For now guys, thanks for watching. Sure appreciate your support. Hit that subscribe button. If you're not subscribed already, what is wrong with you? <laughs> Hit the subscribe button for me guys, it really helps. Share the video with a friend, that really helps. Engage in the comments down below because that helps as well. And I'm on top of those comments guys. You got any questions, concerns, comments, whatever it might be. Hey fat kid, lose some weight. Cause you know, I've never heard that one before. Um, go ahead and comment down below guys. Leave me some love down there and I will love you by uh, giving you constant stream of video content on Precision Rifle Network. Thanks for watching.